the RB17P, the newest handheld GMRS transceiver from Redivis, this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Before we begin, I do want to say that Redivis contacted me and asked if I would be interested in reviewing these radios in exchange for this video. So naturally, I said yes, because I'm curious about all things new radios. So let's take a look around the radio. We'll take a look at the menus. We'll take a look around the radio. I'll throw it on the meter. We'll take a look at the power outage, and we will get on the air and see how this sounds, and I'll also show you the programming software. So let's dive in. So first off, here's everything we're going to get in the box. We're going to get a charging cradle with USB. Now, I want to clarify, this was a demo unit that they sent me. Uh, so I did not actually get the wall adapter for the USB, but that will be included in your box. We're going to get a basic instruction manual. You're going to get your belt clip, a little lanyard, obviously the radio itself. And it comes with a 2200 milliamp hour battery. And the charger is an input of 5 volts and an output of 8.4 volts at 400 milliamps. Now let's go ahead and plug the battery in. That's simply going to snap into place. And to take it out, there's this little button here, kind of spring-loaded. You just pull it out and the battery comes right out. And uh, there is our FCC ID. And looks like we've got a nice color screen. It's some blue and yellow and whatnot. You can actually change the whole back of this, and I'll show you in a minute. Right here, you'll notice a little lock icon. This radio factory uh, comes locked. So if you just long press the OK Unlock. button, now it's unlocked. And let's take a quick walk around the radio. Down here, we've got uh, just a few buttons, pretty easy to navigate. You've got your menu button, and these are going to correspond with what button. So menu is going to be this top Channel button here. Mode. And we can hit exit will be the back button. And AB here will also be this back arrow. You can see the little green thing going from top to bottom there. And then we have our up and down arrows. Now this is kind of quirky. Uh, <laughs> so if we watch channel one here, when I hit the up arrow, it goes down to 30. These one. are kind of backwards to me. Two. Seems one. a little weird. On the left, we've got our PTT button, and we've also got a programmable button uh, that you can program uh, just with the menu to uh, choose different functions. Right now, if you long press it, it's going to be a monitor. It's opening the squelch, and if we just short press it, it's going to open up our NOAA frequencies. So it's got all the NOAA frequencies programmed in here as well. So good for when you're out hiking or portable, whatever. And uh, if there's some inclement weather coming in, you can tune into the NOAA weather station and hear what's uh, going on in your area. On the right-hand side, we've got our flap door that opens up for either a programming cable or your microphone and headphones. So you can have an external hand mic if you like. Back here is where our uh, belt clip goes. Now that does not attach to the battery, so that's nice. And the belt clip is just one of those snap-on ones, so it's just gonna slide in like such, and now our belt clip is in. On the top of the radio, we have this knob that's gonna be our power slash volume knob. Power on. Then we have this red emergency button, so if you push that, it transmits that annoying noise, and you hit the PTT to stop it. You're gonna have an upgraded antenna from an FRS radio. This is a little bit longer now. It does seem like it's permanently affixed to the radio, but there's actually, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little screw there, a little star screw that uh, we're, we can use to unscrew the antenna and swap that out if we like, because that's legal on GMRS radios. Now let's dive into our menus. First off, we've got a channel mode or uh, memory mode. So we just hit the OK button in order to edit it. And this will cycle between whether you want to see the frequency or just the channel number. And then hit OK to confirm. Menu two, we can change our CTCSS, or what sometimes they call privacy tones. Now, one thing that bothers me about this, you can change your CTCSS tones, but you can't turn them on or off. You've got to do that in the programming software. So if you're out portable or on the fly or somewhere else and you need to turn it off, uh, that is not an option. So I think that's something that needs to be fixed in the software, but at least you can change it. Here we have our transmit power which is either high or low. We're gonna test out what that is in a second. We've got our squelch. So that will go up to, looks like it goes up to nine. We've got our, basically a battery save. So come stock one 
to four, so let's leave it on that. Dual standby on, so what this means is it will basically monitor or listen on both frequencies. It's not gonna receive on both frequencies at the same time, but if your top channel has a frequency come in or your bottom channel has a frequency come in, you basically can have two different frequencies monitoring at the same time, so that's a good feature. Here you can adjust the backlight for how long you wanna have it on, 5, 10, 30 seconds, or always. Then we have our LCD color. So you can change the whole color of this. So you've got black, which it's on now. We can change it to red. We can change it to green or yellow or blue or purple or cyan. Getting fancy now. Or white and then back to black. So whatever suits your fancy there. We've got our beep. Uh, I prefer to leave these off actually, so I'm going to turn that off. And we've got our voice, so if you want to have voice prompts, you can have that. I leave those off as well. Timeout timer, so you can change that to uh, 60, 120, or 180 seconds. We've got our Roger beep on or off. And here's the uh, second function button. So it's defined right now as the NOAA. We can have it as monitor if we just short press it. You can turn it off. You can have it scan. You can do Vox. You can use it as a second PTT, which is a nice function. And then back to Noah. So I'm just gonna leave it on uh, Noah. We've got auto lock on. So what that means is when you turn the radio on, it's automatically gonna be locked. I'm gonna keep that off, but that might be something if you're giving these out to a group of people and you don't want them changing the frequencies, you can just leave that lock on and uh, no one can uh, muck with the radio unless they unlock it. You've got a busy lock. I believe this is intended to prevent you from transmitting when it's receiving, basically so you're not doubling with someone. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. And then we have our APRO. So this is basically a voice compander. So it's kind of uh, like a compression. So it's gonna compress your voice a little bit as it transmits and uh, give a little bit clearer audio on the other side. And then here's our NOAA. So like if we didn't have NOAA programmed on the side button, you can access it this way and uh, turn it on or off. So that's how you can do that. And then you have a full reset. And that's it for the menus. And you can always hit this back button at any time to get out. Uh, this back button is also gonna cycle through our A and B channel. And if we long press it, it is going to go ahead and scan through all the frequencies. And notice it's scanning down now if I hit up. Well, no, because up is down and down is up. If I hit down, then all the frequencies start counting uh, in higher numerical order. Now, a couple other things to note on the screen as we're making different changes, there's different icons that will either appear or not appear. So for example, on the bottom channel, we can see that CTCSS is on. We have a continuous toad coded squelch system enabled on this. And on the top one, I do not. You've also got N, uh, meaning we're on narrow band right now. This little squiggly here is just telling us that our compander is on our voice compander, uh, or that will be off if it's not. And if we cycle through our frequencies, we're gonna have all of the 22 FRS slash GMRS frequencies programmed in. But when we get up to channel 23, we can see now we have this little plus icon that just kicked on. So that is going to allow us to use repeaters now. So this is the receive frequency for channel 23. And when we key up, it'll go to 467.550. You can do everything that FRS radios can do with this radio. Now let's talk about the quality. This, uh, I'm actually very impressed. This feels very, very rugged, very durable. Not something that I'm gonna worry about breaking. Uh, it feels quite rugged like some of the DMR radios that are out. Same 1.7 inch screen that's gonna be found on the DMR radios. And just to show you, here is another Redivis DMR radio and they're both just, they're very rugged. They're not something you feel like is a toy that if you drop it, it's gonna break. Uh, these uh, are definitely feel like they're gonna last. So uh, A plus for quality in terms of ruggedness for me. 
I'm gonna throw it on the meter and take a look at the power output, but the first thing I need to do is take this antenna off. And we can see there's a little screw there with a star bit. So I'm just gonna unscrew that. And all that's doing is just kind of locking it down on the threads. And we can remove our antenna to reveal an SMA female. That's uh, kind of rare on these Chinese radios. Usually that's an SMA male. That's surprising. I need to get a different adapter. Now, this is actually one of the cool things about GMRS versus FRS. You are legally allowed to use different antennas. So for example, this is an antenna called a signal stick and it's a 19 inch antenna. You can just swap out your antenna if you like and get further reception. Or you can use a portable uh, like a roll up J pole antenna and get it up in the tree and get farther out because your, your four or five watts that we're going to get from this is really only going to give you a couple miles at best consistently. But by having a better antenna, you will uh, usually get out farther. Let's take a look at the power output. So I've got the radio going into the watt meter and then into a dummy load. So we're not actually transmitting. I'm on channel one and you can see there's a little L there for low power. So let's key up. This meter's accurate. It's about a half a watt on these low uh, power tests. It's not the greatest. So 0.16 watts or so. Um, so take that reading with a little bit of a grain of salt. And then we can hit menu, go to our transmit power and change that to high. Now you can see there is an H next to the frequency. And we'll key up. And now we're getting... Uh, about three-ish watts, so anywhere between three, three and a half watts. So that could be maybe four watts. That's about typical for a handheld transceiver of this kind. Let's take a listen at the audio now. I'll do a test with the Compander on from the transmitting radio and with the Compander off and see if that makes any difference. This is a test of the Redivis RB17P. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. This is with the voice compander on. Check two, check two, sibilance. This is a test of the Redivis RB17P with the voice compander off. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. At one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Check two, check two, sibilance, sibilance. Now let's take a look at the programming software. You are going to need a programming cable for these of the FTDI version. You can pick one of these up from redivis.com and this software is also available from redivis.com. So as we open up the software, looks pretty basic. There's not a lot of stuff you can do. All this grayed out stuff are things we cannot change. Uh, but other things like up here we have decode and encode. So this is our CTCSS decode and encode. We also have digital codes as well as analog. So that is nice or you can choose to leave them off by setting none. Now, this is the only place you can actually turn these on or off. It would be nice if they would come out with a firmware version for the radios to actually be able to do all this on the radio itself, but you cannot. If this is off on the software and you program your radio, there is no way to turn it on on the radio. You have to use the, the software to do it. So it'd be nice if they changed that. Over here, we can change our transmit power from low to high. We can choose whether or not we want to add this when we enable scanning. Uh, here is our busy channel lockout. So we have off carrier and QT slash DCS and our compander function, which we can turn on or off. That's pretty much it. You can set them for all the different channels that you like. These channels are locked down to low because these are the ones that share with FRS. So these are only limited to low power. Everything else you can do uh, high or low. Now, one thing to note, the software is backwards when you get these radios and they have not fixed this. I just downloaded this software uh, at the, right before I'm filming this. And all of these, so starting on channel 23, these are our repeater frequencies. These are all backwards. 462550 should be there and 467550 should be here. So the receive and the transmit are backwards. I emailed them uh, a few weeks ago and they came up with a fix and they sent me this file right here that says GMRS fixed data. Why they haven't implemented this in the software is beyond me, 
because right now this would have me receiving on 467550 and transmitting on 462550, which is completely backwards. I don't know why they haven't released this to the wild yet, but if we hit open and go to this GMRS fixed data, now we can see everything is flopped the way it should be. I can upload this to my radio and actually be on the right frequencies because you cannot edit these. Nothing happens. So they need to release this to the wild. So I'm basically the only one that has the actual right working version of this radio right now. Now there is a workaround for this frequency error. Although we can't change the frequencies here, we can actually add frequencies down here. Now it won't allow us to go outside of the GMRS frequencies. So we can't add our 70 centimeter ham radio bands or, and, or things like that, but these should be backwards. So I can type in 462.550 and then on the transmit, I can type in 467.550. I'll leave the encoding off and the decode, change this back to narrow and then we can do whatever we want to do here. I'll turn the compander on and then I can write this to my radio and it's working. So we're programming other frequencies into this that are not intended. Writing complete. And then I'll show you on the radio. We now have instead of 30 channels, we have 31. It's added the plus offset narrow band. The companion circuitry is on. So that's a fix. If you have these radios already, email Radioddity and let them know that the repeater frequencies are wrong and you need the corrected code plug for this. Should be pretty easy. I don't know why uh, they haven't implemented this in their software already, but it is what it is. And to actually program these, we're gonna take our FTDI cable, plug it into the computer, and it's gonna have this two prong end to it that you will connect to the radio thusly. It's important to have the radio on and turn the, make sure you have the volume up to some degree because that's how this communicates. And then we're gonna go to settings and click on this port. Make sure your COM port is selected and we can then go program and you can either read it from the radio. So if you wanna clone radios, it's basically copying all your tones and decodes uh, and your scan and your BCL and, and all those functions. So you can have all the radios uh, programmed the same. So you can read, you know, if I wanted to read from this radio and program another one of these radios so they're all the same, you can do that. But uh, now that I have the proper code plug, simply hit program and write. You can see it's writing here. And on the top of the radio, we've got a little blinking light that's gonna let us know it's working. And now the save is complete. So there we have it, gang, a quick look at the Redivis RB17P, a very nice radio. I like this a lot. I sure do hope they fix the issues uh, with the programming. I think uh, it's a pretty easy fix. I don't know why they haven't done it already uh, as far as the repeaters. And I really wish they would come out with some firmware release to allow us to enable or disable the CTCSS functions directly from the radio so we don't have to use the software. Other than that, there's really no reason to use software if we can do everything from the radio. It seems a little odd to me that you couldn't program all of the functions uh, on your radio, but that's just me. Anyway, guys, if you are interested in this radio, I will leave a link in the description below. You can pick one up from redivis.com. And until next time, we'll see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.